Good morning and welcome to the West Cheltenham Transport Improvement Scheme Contractor Share Events. This project represents one of the biggest and most significant major projects that the Gloucestershire County Council has undertaken on the highway network today. My name is Alan Bullock. I'm a project manager within the major projects team for Gloucestershire County Council. Today's event will provide an opportunity to gain an overview to understand the proposals, meet our contractor and answer questions that have been sent in over the past few weeks. Due to the number of inquiries we've received, we've bunched these into themes and we will go through this as the presentation evolves. If you have any comments, please feel free to submit as comments on YouTube or send on to our email address at majorprojects at gloucestershire.gov.uk. We're holding today's event as a socially distanced event. We're keen to engage with you in all means at our disposal, including the project website, scheme bulletins, and email. If I could introduce the team who will be available to provide more information and answer questions as we move through the presentation. If each of you could explain your role in the project. So, Alex Howarth. Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm a project manager for Gloucester County Council, uh, and my work on the scheme is focused on the section between uh, M5 and Arcourt Roundabout. Kath Waller. Hi, I'm Kath Waller. I'm the Public Liaison Officer for the scheme. I'll be responsible for all communications regarding Knights Brown's project. Steve Price. Hi, I'm Steve Price. I'm a Contracts Manager for the Knights Brown Construction. I'll have overall responsibility for delivery of the project for Knights Brown and for assisting our project manager, Richard Knight. Our special guest, Richard Knight. Hi there, I'm Richard Knight of Knights Brown. I'll be the project manager for the scheme and I'll be on site on a day-to-day -day basis. Adam Miles. Hi, my name's Adam Miles. Um, I'm a project manager for Atkins. And Mohammed Al Taleb. I am Mohammed Al Taleb. I'm a senior engineer at Atkins. Right, thank you. West Cheltenham Transport Improvement Scheme is a 23.6 million major highways project funded by the Growth Deal with Gloucestershire First Local Enterprise Partnership to tackle the current congestion issues along the A40 corridor and support future developments along the route with the Cyber Central proposals and other developments identified in the Joint Core Strategy. The project covers the A40 between M5 Junction 11 and Cheltenham Rail Station and has been split into separate sections as shown on the attached plan. The scheme includes £1.6 million pounds of ring fence cycle and walk improvements between Arcourt Roundabout and Lansdowne Rail Bridge. The cycle improvements will integrate with other proposed schemes, including Highways England's B4063 cycle improvements linking Gloucester and Cheltenham, and the Great Western Rail Works linking Lansdowne Road Rail Bridge with Cheltenham Station, therefore providing a continuous cycle link between Gloucester and Cheltenham Rail Stations. The walking and cycling improvements will be delivered in 2021 and will provide improvements along the A40 corridor and through the wider Benall and St Mark's residential area, offering alternative routes for walkers and cyclists of all abilities. The works will be split into two distinct phases, the first of which between M5 Junction 11 and Arcourt Roundabout we have awarded a construction contract to Knights Brown Construction Limited to deliver from June 2020. The second stage will see works delivered between Arcourt Roundabouts and Gloucester Road, Lansdowne Road Junction. The first of the two stages will see works being delivered by Knights Brown between M5 Junction 11 and Arcourt starting this month and work continuing for 12 months. The next stage between our courts and Gloucester Road, Lansdowne Road Junction, will see work starting in late 2020 or early 2021. It is anticipated that all works will be completed by the end of 2021. 
I'd like to provide a brief overview of the project. M5 Junction 11 to our court will include eastbound widening of the A40 carriageway, providing an extra traffic lane. Our court roundabout will include widening of the roundabout with an additional traffic lane and the associated approaches and exits. A new bus lane approaching from Staverton on the B4063. Widening of Haverley Lane on the south side of the roundabout. A new westbound exit from the park and ride site directly onto the A40 westbound carriageway. Our courts to Bennell roundabout will include eastbound carriageway widening, localised widening and improvements to Telstar Way and Bennell roundabout and walk-in cycling improvements. Additional highway improvements will be made from Bennell Roundabout to Lansdowne Road, Gloucester Road Junction. I'd like to provide some artist impressions of the work. So in the top left, looking from the M5 to our courts, the top right from Cheltenham to our courts, and bottom left showing an overall layer of our court roundabout, and the bottom right looking from the west overhead at our courts. This drawing shows a general arrangement of how the our court roundabout will look. The widened sections are shown in yellow and working clockwise round the roundabouts. The A40 west of our court will include eastbound carriageway widening, a new westbound bus lane from the park and rise. On the B4063, a new bus lane will be provided. On Fiddler's Green Lane, we will see a new token crossing and traffic detection. On the A40 East approach, we will see carriageway widening on the approach. Haverley Lane will see carriageway widening and a short section of new shared use footway cycleway and overall widening of the roundabout circulatory itself. That concludes the short introduction to the scheme but please feel free to get in touch. If you'd like to raise any questions via the website or using the major project's email address, please do. We'd now like to show you a, a very short video which is available on our website, outlining the first stage of the project being delivered by Knights Brown between M5 Junction 11 and our court roundabouts.
I'd like to hand over to our Knights Brown team to provide more information on who they are and a bit more of an overview relating to the first stage of the works. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Kath. I'm the Public Liaison Officer for Knights Brown. Normally, we'd hold this event with you in person and be able to answer all your questions. So holding that online, this is a first for us. So hopefully um, you will still find it interesting, but please do engage with us throughout the project. For those of you who don't know who Knights Brown are, we're a modern and innovative construction company. Our head office is in Ringwood in Hampshire, but we also have offices in Rochester and in South Wales in Bridgend. We deliver complex civil engineering schemes throughout the UK. And we've just been awarded the contract to deliver phases one and two of the West of Cheltenham Transport Improvement Scheme. For the scheme, um, I will be the public liaison officer. So if you have any concerns, any questions, please do feel free to get in contact with us. We're a friendly bench and we're always uh, open to any kind of dialogue. So please get in contact. I'll now hand you over to Steve Price, who's going to just give you a brief overview of how we're proposing to construct the scheme. And then Richard Knight will go through some of the phases on the project. Thanks, Kath. So the um, project is divided into two distinct areas, um, the Arcourt roundabout, and the M5 Junction 11 to the Alcourt roundabout. And to deliver the project in the most time efficient manner, we'll be constructing the two phases at the same time, which we hope will delimit, limit the delay and disruption caused to the local area. Inevitably, with um, traffic management, there will be some delays, but we'll be trying to minimise this by keeping all roads open um, during peak hours. Um, lane closures will only take place during off-peak hours and where we require full road closures, they'll be undertaken overnight. Before we undertake any um, uh, road closures, we'll be giving plenty of notice through letter drops and bulletins to enable people to plan alternative routes. Access for residents will be maintained throughout the duration of the works as well as access to the park and ride. One of the key areas that may disrupt pedestrians and cyclists will be the closure of the subway at Harcourt Roundabout while we undertake um, an extension of, of the subway. We will, however, provide a safe diversion route for pedestrians and cyclists, but we do appreciate this may add a little bit of um, time onto your journey. The, the traffic management will mostly consist of lane closures and reduced speed limits. Um, as I said, if, if there are... Um, lane closures, they will be uh, undertaken outside of peak hours. And we do appreciate that there will be an impact on the local community and your daily lives. And we apologize for that in advance, um, but please bear with us. And we do um, thank you for your patience and understanding whilst we complete the works. Um, I'll hand over to Richard now, who will talk through some of the phasing for the works. Good morning. Um, as stated earlier, I'm Richard Knight, I'm the project manager, so I will be on site um, on a daily basis. And apologies for any background noise. I'm actually on site now and um, working off a remote internet connection, so uh, so you may hear a bit of background noise. So I'll just take you through a couple of slides um, just, to, just to expand on the works we're doing. So Fiddler's Green Lane uh, works will start in early October. And this includes the widening, um, widening of the lane at the junction in both directions, installation of a new Toucan crossing um, for enhanced access for pedestrians and cyclists, modifying the existing islands and in service installations to facilitate uh, junction improvements. As Steve said, the north and southeast subway extensions um, and Splitter Island works will unfortunately use the subway throughout the the duration of the scheme, uh, but there will be a diversion down to the controlled crossing at Telstar Way, and we're looking to close the subway on the 22nd of June um, to start these works. And we'll also be looking to, to put a cycle path diversion in um, and footway. So the works on the 4063, uh, we're upgrading the water mains, uh, service diversions to enable the new road widening, 
widen the carriageway uh, for a dedicated bus lane and upgrade the existing cycle path. So they start late July and uh, early August, and we'll be working off peak traffic management on these areas, try and keep them moving. And the A40, sorry, through there. So our court roundabouts, um, traffic management starts on the 19th of June to close the inner lane on the roundabout. And this is so that we can uh, uh, widen the approach all the way around. And we've got some new drainage works and alterations to traffic lights to increase the traffic flow. And then Hadley Lane will start in July to construct a ded dedicated uh, left hand turn in lane and working further around towards the park and ride scheme. And again, the park and ride A40 northbound will be improvements on drainage, service diversions, new bus stops, and a new pedestrian crossing in the car park. There's, Steve's going to flick onto uh, the next slide, which has got some useful contacts, but say I am on site uh, predominantly 100% of the time. So um, we have an open door policy. So if you need to pop in and see us, then please feel free to, to come along to the office. Right. Thank you, Kath, Steve, and Richard. Appreciate the summary. Uh, so hopefully we've got a bit more to steer on Knights Brown. Moving on to some of the questions and some of the themes that have been sent in to us over the past week. We're very grateful for those that we've received, and we'll continue to answer any questions as we can go, going forward. So please don't hesitate to send those in. I'll move on to the first of the questions. What changes will we see at the to the public at the Fiddler's Green Lane Junction. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Alex Howard. Morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, on the Fiddler's Green Lane, um, this was something that the, the difficulty of getting out of Fiddler's Green Lane was raised first time at some of the share events that were back in June 2019, so almost a year ago. Um, myself and others on the call were at those events, and I'm sure some people watching online were there too. So. From that point, the, the feedback was, was taken away. It was included within the business case, which has been approved by GVerse Let. Um, and more importantly, it was fed back to the design. And so right through the development of the scheme, that was taken on board. Um, I think the first thing to say that, unfortunately, due to the geometry of the roundabout, one of the main questions we get asked is whether signals could be installed on the green lane. Um, but unfortunately, the answer to that is no, because of the lack of stacking space. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't implement some measures. So I'll just run through a few of the things we've looked to um, include as part of the design. Um, first is a queue detection loop on Fiddler's Green Lane, which will detect when the traffic is queuing back and feed that back to the main system, um, which will make adjustments to the timings to make it easier to get out. Um, the junction itself, so our court roundabout signals will be upgraded to a full mover solution, which is a, a complex bit of software but it basically reacts very quickly to changes in traffic. So that should be able to adapt to the situation at any given time. Um, and in line with some of the feedback we've had as well, we've looked to include some keep clear markings on the roundabout. Um, so given the limitations of the site, we've looked to um, try and minimise the impact of the works on the Fiddler's Green Lane um, approach. Um, but I think a key point to make as well is part of the wider scheme, one of the key objectives is to look to improve and reduce traffic on all arms and, and the A40. Um, so this should include a improvement to journey times and a, a, a reduction in possible people using Fiddler's Green Lane as a rat run. So uh, as a project as a whole, we should be looking to um, make that change um, and also improve the mode of transport, which again should be reduced pressure. Great, thank you for that, Alex. Um, the next question is in relation to noise and pollution, and I'm going to hand over to Adam Miles, uh, who works for Atkins. Thank you, Adam. Um, by addressing the existing and future traffic congestion, those winter schemes will lead to a reduction in associated pollution emissions, with less vehicles idling on the approaches to our court and Benville roundabout. It's recognised that the improvements may increase traffic capacity, which could lead to an increase in emissions. 
However, modelling completed for the final business case concluded that no significant increase in noise or air quality emissions are expected from the implementation of the scheme. In respect of air quality, a slight adverse effect was identified at one receptor in the modelling for phase one. However, this receptor in the model was in the property of White Lodge, which has subsequently been demolished. In respect of noise levels, the modelling undertaken for phases one and two found that the increase in long-term noise levels was negligible for all receptors, with some non-significant increases in the short term. The air quality and noise impacts for phase three and four of the scheme have been shown by the assessments to not require further mitigation. However, in the interest of improving local air quality, reducing noise emissions, reducing carbon emissions, and general sustainability, the scheme, alongside the following phase three and four works, do include mitigation measures to reduce the effects reported in the assessment. These measures include the West of Cheltenham Walking and Cycling Improvement Scheme, landscape planting, um, which as phases one and two, include proposals for revised landscape planting within the scheme exempts to soften the impact of the new carriageway. The following stages of the Wixus schemes, phases three and four, propose, propose further landscape improvements with enhancement planting to be located in local community areas to provide greater community benefit. Further local improvements under investigation to drive modal shift in the area, such as further connected active travel improvements, park and ride improvements changes, and car share scheme campaigns. A study completed for phases three and four found that there was no requirement for hard noise control measures, such as noise barriers, due to the small increases in noise associated with the construction of the Wixis schemes. The feasibility of a noise barrier to provide some reduction in noise levels of properties was investigated, but found that while some noise reductions could be achieved, it would require the removal of existing vegetation screening the A40 and therefore have a detrimental effect on the local landscape and character of the area. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate that. Um, we're going to talk about bus facilities with Alex. And so, part of the work scheme, uh, um, a key element of the works is the, the investment in sustainable travel, and buses play a key role in that. So, we've looked at a few improvements. Um, the first, um, I'll start with the, the package to be constructed by Knight Brown. So, the, the B4063, we've got the installation of a new bus lane. Um, it's about 150 metres long, so it will provide a key access route around any queuing traffic um, on B4063, and it also allows the bus the opportunity to stop in its own lane, um, which provides an additional traffic benefit. Um, it will then continue to the roundabout and stay in um, the first level and continue on its journey. So that's the first element of the work. Um, another, a second key element is the new park and ride exit. Um, so at the moment, any high-speed services to Gloucester Golden Valley can go up around about and then join the Golden Valley there, whereas with the new exit, they'll be able to pick up inside the park and ride and then go straight onto the A40. So that will provide a significant journey time saving for those express services um, heading from Cheltenham to Gloucester. Um, and alongside these two key pieces of infrastructure, um, we'll be looking at making improvements to shelters, um, paving and associated works with the bus stops. Um, within the future phase, um, which is down towards Benel Roundabout, um, we're looking to maintain the bus lay by um, at Benel Roundabout, but there'll be a new pedestrian facility on the of pedestrians um, to access the bus stops. Um, we'll also be maintaining the bus lane on Benel Roundabout and along the A40 towards Cheltenham. Um, so that's the, the package of works within the WICTA scheme. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning at this stage, um, GCC have been successful in their um, bid funding for M5 Junction 10, which actually includes an element of funding to improve the current park and ride at Isle Court to create a parking interchange. So this is likely to include a full, full remodeling of the site um, and may include additional parking, facilities for electric vehicle charging, and so this, this is the start of the bus improvements which will then built on with further expansion of the park and ride in the future. Thank you, Alex. 
I'm now going to talk about uh, traffic increases with uh, Mohammed Al Taleb to present. Thank you. As you all know, there is a significant quantum of a new development planned uh, for the west of Cheltenham area, including Cypress Central, Gums Park, and other sites. The approach of the scheme is to facilitate and to bring forward development of the initial phase of both employment and residential land. Although it is accepted that the scheme will not mitigate for the full levels of maximum development. It is to be noted that M5 Junction 10, all movements is also now in the planning and design phase and developers will also have other schemes that will be proposed for the longer term. The business case looks at two future years, 2021 and 2031 with 2021 the most applicable comparative year. Background the traffic growth for the two forecast years is based on temporal levels of increase, which takes account of local planning data to provide factors, which when combined with the region traffic forecast can provide a localized picture of future traffic growth. The levels of increase are estimated to be 2% up to 2021 and 6% to 2031. It is accepted that if all possible development is brought forward, traffic growth will be higher than these levels, but there would also be significant other mitigation schemes and the full build-out periods for the sites are 10 years plus. Thank you, Mohammed. We've been asked a supplementary question about the loss of any farmland, woodland or green space as part of the works. Um, in summary, we're not uh, undertaking any works outside of the highway boundary with the exception of the demolition of two properties, uh, White Lodge and Pine Lodge, which have already been demolished. Um, and effectively, that is the only brownfield site that we are extending into. Um, we are replanting all trees on a two-for-one basis so that we're trying to uh, ensure that there's a carbon benefit associated with the scheme. Um, and we're retaining all the trees alongside the frontage of GCHQ um, to ensure that we protect the local uh, nature and environment surrounding that corridor. Uh, next, we have um, some discussion on the travel plan. Um, Adam Miles is going to kindly present on that. Thanks, Alan. Um, we appreciate this work will cause disruption, so we've been working with all partners, local businesses and stakeholders to understand their transport needs during this scheme and try to reduce delays. During the coronavirus pandemic, transport patterns have obviously changed and many businesses have adopted a working from home setter. Um, we're working currently um, planning another employer workshop to better understand the change in staff travel and how GCC can mitigate problems on the network. We're also paying close attention to government COVID-19 guidance with regard to social distancing and public transport. There is an immediate impact on public transport as a result of the COVID-19 in the immediate term, which means that this scheme will not be actively promoting bus travel. However, as soon as social distancing can permit, uh, we will be encouraging people to make use of the high frequency bus services that are available. Thank you, Adam. Uh, overall, looking ahead, the County Council are looking to competitively tender the works between Arcourt Roundabout and Lansdowne Road, Gloucester Road Junction. This will allow us to enter into contracts and start works in this next stage of, uh, in late 2020 or early 2021. We would expect a further event of this type or hopefully once socially distancing restrictions have been reduced uh, that we can meet up in person uh, in advance of these works starting. But in the meantime, please feel free to continue to send in your correspondence. Um, if you've contacted us in the comments section, we will take away any questions that you've raised and we will reply to them uh, by updating our web page. Um, and we're very keen to promote the web page, which is www.glottishire.gov.uk slash Wictis. Um, and you can find out more information about the scheme um, from email bulletins and following GCC social media channels. I, I just wanted to say in summary at the end, this scheme is inevitably going to cause some disruption to all stakeholders, but we're very grateful for your patience during this, this period. And we fully recognise that hopefully the benefits here on offer in terms of traffic benefits and those to cyclists and pedestrians will be realised at the end of this construction period. And we thank you for your continued support. Uh, thank you for um, 
tuning in and uh, we look forward to having any future contact with you. Thank you and goodbye.